What's going on boys? Welcome back to another video. It's actually, it's been a minute. It hasn't been another video. It's been, oh, she's video bombing me. Oh, we're starting off a little frantic today. I need to put the E92 on the trailer because we are going to be going to Coda. Uh, last time I forgot to film this. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to this time. I'm gonna get the car on the trailer and uh, then we should be making our way to Coda. All right, boys, so let me show you what we got here. The E92 is all loaded up. Uh, I am going to be towing this to Coda. Yeah, it's been a minute, so there's been a lot of changes that have happened. Actually, let me show you something. We added a project car to the garage. This is all I'm gonna show you. It's here. I, I don't even know what else to tell you. It's here. That is big 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 and i am in the process of building out a detached car garage uh it was a one car or it was a one car opening uh the guy that i bought my house from was basically just using it for woodwork so i cleared out all his woodworking stuff and uh we are converting it to a two car garage door opening and then i'm going to start building out everything needed for a proper car garage and uh, here's where we're at. So we have the two car garage door framed in, uh, which is perfect. The door is gonna be right about there-ish. And then from probably like here over, I'm thinking like man cave things, like poker room, simulator, something like that. So it's gonna be really sick, but he's got that done. Uh, the framing done-ish. Uh, we're gonna have to pour concrete for the entryway. Still a few more things to, to do there. Uh, but it's much closer than it has been in the past, so that's cool. I may be able to get the garage door installed next week. But for now, this weekend, it is E92 Coda track day. So I'm not going to take up too much time because there should be a lot of track footage here. But uh, it's Friday. It's Friday right now. And um, we can check in at 5 o'clock tonight, leave the car there and then uh, get there early tomorrow morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's when driving actually starts. So, got it all loaded up. I'm going to head to Coda and I'll, uh, yeah, see you when you get there. All right, boys, setup is complete. Check-in is complete. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna make this too long because like I said, I'm gonna have a ton of stuff to record in the morning and all the track footage, but we're all set up. So now I'll make my way back to uh, back to the Casa, leave all this stuff here overnight, and I'll see y'all in the morning. All right, boys, I'm sure if you can hear me, but uh, about to go out and do a second session. Uh, I did my first one with an instructor, and I just, again, I like to take those first ones slow, um, and I'll probably, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I like to take them slow. Uh, it was good to have an instructor. I don't think I'll need one the rest of the day, um, but I'm gonna try and use the GoPro. Uh, to actually start recording those and I did bring uh, something to record my lap times too. So I have another session in like 30 minutes, 20 minutes. So I'm going to get ready for that and then uh, hopefully take you all along for the ride. It's gonna be a hot one. this way uh, so I am just going out here I think this is either my second or third session of the day and I'm starting behind this blue I think it's 435 and you'll see pretty quickly uh, a couple things a I don't like to go very hard the first lap uh, I'm sure my tires and things are fine I know I'm not going to outdrive those but I just don't like to push the car as much as I can on the first lap. And I also 
don't like to get really close to the car in front of me for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not a pro driver, I'm not racing, uh, I don't want to cause an accident, but two, uh, I don't know what that other person is going to do. And there's a big chance, a high probability that they're new to doing track time as well. Um, as you can see with this guy coming up here, not in this turn, but I believe after the back straight, you'll see he goes really, really deep into the uh, into the corner, and more likely than not, it's because he saw someone in his rearview mirror and wasn't paying attention. And also, when you get going that fast, you're on a track, um, things just kind of sneak up on you. Uh, things happen a lot faster than you're used to because you're used to going 60 miles an hour. This guy clearly isn't, I mean, his car is not set up for track. He brought it out there, but this is probably his daily driver. So he goes really deep into the next corner here. After that, you can see he's kind of all over missing apexes. So again, I didn't want to really be on him too much. Uh, so for the most part, this first lap, it was a good warm up because I was just stuck behind him. Uh, but I'm just kind of taking it easy here and uh, just keeping an eye on what he's doing, making sure that I'm not gonna get myself in trouble here. Another thing you'll notice is my car has recently been tuned. And I am not a big fan of the verbal tune, but, uh, and I asked for it to not happen, but every time I come off of wide open throttle, this thing backfires and pops like no one's business. I need to get that fixed ASAP. But you can see here, he goes really deep into that corner, misses the apex. I'm not an instructor, but you can just tell that it's probably his first or second time out. started to come around but he weirdly put on the brakes pretty quickly there so here he finally lets me go around which is nice uh, with this group edge addicts you can only pass when the car gives you the point by so you give me the point by I'm allowed to go by now I kind of have open track to try and catch the beat from here so this corner coming up down the hill this one right here I was told to keep it tight on the right side but I think next time I'm going to try and let it drift out more to the left and then swing it back in I was also told not to really hit the curbs on this but I didn't have an instructor with me anymore and I kind of I was watching some of the other cars and they all were taking a lot more of the curb so I'm going to try doing that next time uh, it seemed to be the fastest line, at least that's what a lot of the other cars are doing. Then here, I, the instructor told me to just aim right for this and kind of put your car right over the rumble strip, which I like. Not many other people do that line, but it seems to help a lot. Pin. I forget what corner this is, uh, but it leads to the back straight. The entire day I was nervous about my carbon hood because I have yet to put hood pins in it. The last thing I wanted to do is have that thing come flying off <laughs> into someone else's car or whatever. So I was just worried the entire day. But at, towards the end of the day, I did start to go full out the entire short stretch. But after the back straight, uh, I'm using high temp fluid, but Techstar slash OEM pads. And uh, halfway through this back section, they would just turn to mush. Uh, I could probably get two to three good laps out of them, ish. But every time in this back section, uh, they would be really, really soft by uh, 
by about the, the finish line uh, corner, the, the turn before the home straight. This turn right here, I just started taking it in fourth, which is definitely much better. I was doing it in third, but this whole section can be done in fourth in my car. And this one, I'm just getting used to bringing it out further. I uh, wasn't using all the track there. But then downshift into third here, and by this point, my brakes are absolute mush. Still getting my braking points down on this track because it's so big and it's hard to know what the braking points are when your brake pads are getting softer and softer every lap so being consistent is really hard uh, so if I do get a braking point down you know the next lap it's going to be a little bit further back because my brakes are that much softer but once I get some track pads bolted in uh, I'll be able to get more consistent knowledge of where to break for each corner, and that'll help shave a lot of time. I think my best time so far is about a 2.43, uh, which isn't horrible, but it's not good by any stretch of the imagination. I know guys with a lot more experience in similar cars are turning like 2.37, 2.36, 2.37, somewhere around there. So after watching the footage, I can already tell you what a lot of places I can make up time but again I think this was my second time out on the track my second day out on the track so I've probably had 20 to 25 laps on Coda as a whole uh, so I'm not upset with 243 that's not horrible I'll go for fifth, hoping that my pads are fine. This back section is just a fun section. You try and take this one, hit the apex here, and then connect the dots. You bring it out wide here, hit those curves, and then hit this curve, and then come a little wide there, and then run over the rumble strips right here. I could probably take that a little deeper. Um, but I was finding that was a good spot to start my turn in. Then using fourth here again. It doesn't look that fast. I would say this is probably a 70 mile an hour turn, something like that. It feels a lot faster than it looks. Then just slide tap on the brakes and then power all the way through the corner there. I use a lot more of the which is good. Then by this point, downshift, my brakes are just absolutely toast. Alright, I'll stop talking, let you guys watch the rest of this session. the back straight here and I'm in, towards the top of fifth. I want to say my top speed is around 
130, 132 is the highest I hit, but I'm downshifting and going into this corner and you can hear, I'll just let you watch. Yeah, my rear end tried to pass my front end. Never a good thing. So I didn't think I did anything wrong, so I took it slow. I came around this corner. I can't really hear it, but it tried to come around again, and that's kind of when I knew something was wrong because it was super, super loose. Uh, I wasn't getting any warnings. I had nothing looked wrong, but it was super, super loose, going very, very slow. Uh, so that's when I decided to... I still could have kept going, but uh, decided to bring it into the pits to look things over, and uh, yeah, you'll see what happens from there. Boys, we have problems. <laughs> oh yes. Looks like the radiator has said Sayonara. Why is it not manual? There we go. The radiator has done its duty and decided it is done radiating. Uh, curious to see what hose it was, what happened here. Well, boys, I'm not going to say it wasn't a success because, look, we made it home safe, the car is safe, everything's good, but we did have a little bit of a failure. So, like I showed you before, uh, looks like the radiator fan and it just disintegrated. What is in my shoes? And, uh, yeah, that must have led to puncturing something because uh, fluid started spraying out. So I had to pull off the track immediately. Um, I haven't got to diagnose anything yet. Literally yesterday, uh, getting the car loaded back up on the U-Haul trailer, trailer and it back home, uh, getting it off the trailer. It was an all day thing. I was exhausted. But she is back and uh, yeah, now it's gonna be time to dig into what happened here. Uh, I am hoping that I don't have to do an OEM fan. I'm hoping there's an upgrade or something that I can do because the OEM fan is like a thousand bucks alone and I would love to do the radiator refresh, like a cooling upgrade. So new radiator, new engine oil cooler, new I think uh, trans cooler and I think power steering cooler. But there's a whole bunch of oil coolers you can replace. Uh, but I guess the first thing I should do is really take it apart and see what needs to be replaced. I know the fan needs to be replaced and I'm sure there's a line that needs to be replaced because it was, or may, perhaps it punctured the radiator, I'm not sure. Uh, but I will find out. Uh, but all in all, you know, for my, basically, the first time I went out to Coda, like a, well, I don't know if I've told you guys, but the first time I went out to Coda, um, I got three sessions and uh, it was basically just learning. So yesterday, uh, I got three sessions again, and probably I would say 15 to 20 laps. And it, what's hard with that track is uh, every time you improve speed, every time you go quicker, you go quicker, it's hard to get your braking points down, and especially with my brakes. I'm running great brake fluid, Motul RBF 660. Uh, so great fluid, but the pads are awful. The pad, well, they're not awful. They just, they heat up quick. They're uh, OEM pads. So they get soft really quick. So what's hard for me is finding braking points. And I find that, especially as I get quicker, um, my braking points, you know, get further and further down the road. But as I get quicker, put in more laps, my brakes also get softer and softer and softer. So it, it's kind of hard to really improve uh, steadily. I think the fastest time I was able to put down yesterday was a 2.43. Uh, I talked to a bunch of guys who have a lot of experience in 
uh, on Coda with similar cars and they're putting down like 238s. So yes, I'm far off that pace, but not, not like extremely, especially not for uh, little experience and really the braking is what I need to improve next. Uh, but the car performed great yesterday. I do want to install the hood pins uh, just to give me peace of mind because I was really cognizant of that all day yesterday. I was worried the hood, I just had visions of the hood flying up and uh, I don't want that to happen. Tires did great, everything else did great. Uh, the wing performed, everything was great. Everything turned out great. Just the, uh, the fan that exploded, but that happens. So anyway, boys, got this. I have more than enough stuff to do on this now. The E36, it, I think I'm gonna drive that today actually. It hasn't been taken out, so I'm gonna drive that. And then we got the new project to work on. And let me tell you, it is a freaking project. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't wanna bluff you. Let's just, let me just say, I'm gonna have to be watering my money tree here soon because that thing's gonna require some money to get going. Oh man. Too much stuff going on. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm gonna try and upload more. I'm gonna try and be more consistent. I know I should be. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.